Hi everyone, I'm going to do a little walkthrough of another visualization form today. Uh, it's called an index chart and it is often used to compare the performance of different stocks or financial investments to show returns over time. So you can compare how well two different hypothetical investments may have done. Um, and this is a chart that kind of inspired me to demonstrate this visual form, which was in the New York Times a couple weeks ago. Again, related to the current bank crisis, uh, comparing the performance of a handful of regional bank stocks. Um, so I thought I would just show how we could make this type of plot um, in Observable using Observable Plot. So to start, uh, we're going to need some data. So for stock data, uh, one of the places you can go to is Yahoo Finance. Um, we can just type in First Republic Bank, uh, click here. And then there's a historical data tab. And this will give you the open, high, low, close, adjusted close uh, for, well, I guess it looks like for the last year at daily intervals. So we can hit download here and we'll get that there. Uh, and then we can put in the other stocks that we want to add to our comparison. So download that. Uh, let's see. Western Alliance and PacWest. Be nice if there were an API for this, so I didn't have to click so much, but we'll get started. Okay, so now we're gonna, I've created this notebook and I'm gonna use a pre-release version of plot because there's a feature that I wanna take advantage of in this walkthrough. Um, so that's what you see there in my notebook. I'm gonna drag these files over that we just downloaded onto the tab. Um, let's see, I'm gonna hide this download bar. All right, so let's put some of those in. So if we put this in, we can see what's in our data. Um, and it's really the same thing that you just saw on the Yahoo Finance page. Um, but now we can start to make a plot out of it. So I will make a JavaScript cell. Let's see, put it down here. So we'll say plot.plot, .plot, put in a mark, and we'll do the line Y mark. Line Y is for line charts uh, where you have you know, time along the X axis and a value along the Y axis. So we'll say X is date and y is close uh, and then we get sort of our stock chart here um, <laughs> yeah and you can see what's what's happening okay so we're going to put the other stocks on there as well so i'm going to insert those into the notebook just like that and then let's see let's go back to our plot and we'll move it up to the top Okay, so that's one stock, um, but you'll see if I put the other stocks in there, um, it's not really that useful a comparison to compare the absolute values of stocks over time, um, because you know typically what you do is you have you know your thousand dollars or whatever that you're going to invest, and you want to compare the hypothetical outcomes. You know if I had invested in this stock, how would it have performed versus if I invested that thousand dollars in this other stock. Um, so, you know, just buying a stock or just tracking the absolute value of the price of the stock over time doesn't really help you compare their performance very well. So you can see these stocks, you know, started out at very different ranges. There are some similarities in those patterns, but what we really want to do is we want to normalize this data saying, you know, if I had invested that thousand dollars on this date in each of these four stocks, you know, how would they have performed? over time. So you're normalizing them so that you all have the same sort of basis for comparison. So one of the ways that we can do that um, in plot is we can use what's called the normalize transform. So we'll use normalize y because we want to normalize the y value. And we'll use first as the basis, uh, which means we want to normalize relative to the first price in the stock. Uh, and when you see that, now they all start at 1. So they all start at 1.0. So 1 is the normal price. Um, and then the, the change relative to that, so 1.2 is up 20%. 0.8 is minus 20%. So now you can see we basically reproduced 
you know, the structure uh, of this visualization that we saw in the New York Times um, just using the normalized transform. Um, but one of the things that we might want to do uh, to make this a little bit better um, is we might want to add either labels or colors so that we can see what which of these lines corresponds to, to which of these symbols there. So the trick that I'm using here is I have separate tables for each of these stocks, um, but what I can do is combine them into a single table with a new column uh, that represents the symbol of that stock. So I can do that using a JavaScript cell. So we'll say stocks, um, create an array, and then essentially we're just gonna concatenate all four of the stocks that we have here to start. So that's PACW, wall, and Zion. Um, so now if I look at these, you can see, you know, this is just one stock here. Um, this is First Republic, the first row of the First Republic data set. Um, and what we need to do next is we need to add the symbols for these. So I'm going to take each of these and then I'm going to use the map operator. And I'm just going to do it for all of them at the same time using multiple cursors. Uh, but what I'm doing with the map operator is taking a value in each of these rows and driving a new row for, for that row. So I'm transforming each row individually um, as I'm concatenating these stocks together. So if I just use the empty map or the, the identity map, it doesn't do anything to the data. Um, but what it allows me to do is add a new field. So I'm going to call it a symbol field. And then I'm going to paste in the, the symbol here that we have. Um, and now we can see that this row now says symbol FRCB. Um, and if I you know, pull out the last value, let's see, stocks minus one, um, you can see that that's Zion. So I've combined all four of these data sets into one data set, uh, and now we can use it. And this is what we call a tidy data set uh, because it has one row per observation in our data, and it's the type of data structure that works best with plot. So I will make a new JavaScript cell now, and now we can pass in just our stocks value here. Um, and you can see that gives us a bit of a mess. So what we need to do um, is tell plot how the data is grouped into series. Um, and that was the purpose of this symbol column that we added. So now it knows that each symbol um, corresponds to a different series in our data. Another thing that I can do is use stroke rather than Z. And so then I get a different color for each line. Um, I can put a color legend on here, Let's say legend true. Um, and now I can see, you know, which of these colors corresponds to which stock. Um, another thing I could do is I could say tip true here, which is using plots new uh, tooltip feature so that I can sort of mouse over and see what the performance is relative to the first day in our data set. Um, so, you know, if you bought PacWest, um, whatever that first day is, May 16th, 2022, and then you sold it on August 16th, 2022, you would have had a 12% returns, or sorry, 1.2% return. 1.012. Okay, so this is kind of the basic structure uh, of your index chart um, using the normalized transform. Um, but there's a few other things that we might want to do. So one of the things is this normalized transform is choosing just the first day in the data set as the basis of comparison. But maybe that's not the basis that you want to use. You want to choose a different basis of comparison. So let's kind of break down a little bit how this normalized transform is working um, and then show that we can make kind of different, we can choose a different basis of comparison that's maybe more relevant to us. Okay, so first is this concept of first. So I'm gonna duplicate this cell here. We can actually implement that as a function. Uh, and this is a function that takes the array of Y values for each series and then returns the basis. Okay, so if you took out, um, let me show you as an example. So we'll say y is frcb.mapd d uh, dot close. You know that's an array of values. So that's that is the array y that is getting passed into this normalized function. 
Uh, and then if we pull out, you know, just one of those values, that's, you know, 138.89. Um, so what we could do instead, I'll just show you kind of doing the same thing, is I could pass that number in here, and I get the same thing. Now, of course, that, that works for First Republic, but these other stocks had different values on those days. Um, and so we can't use the same value for each series. We have to use a different value for each series. Um, and that's why it's nice to have this normalized transform that will group the values by series for you. And then you can just pull out the value that you want um, in order to compute the basis. So another thing we might want to do is choose a different day in order to um, normalize the price. Uh, and we can do that essentially by choosing a different index into the data. Um, these data sets are aligned so that they all start and end at the same day. They all have the same number of rows. So for example, if I choose you know, 100, um, then it's going to choose a different point somewhere in here, um, whatever 100 days is after, after the starting point. So let's, let's experiment with that a little bit so I can give kind of a better demonstration. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a range input. And this will choose an index i that is between 0 and the size of our data. And I can, again, pick any one of these data sets because they're all the same length. So I'll do from 0 to frcb to length minus 1. We'll call that index. Um, and we'll set the initial value to be 0. OK, I'm going to close that. Now if I pass in this i here, you can see nothing has changed uh, because it's still using the first value in the data set. Um, but now I can sort of slide back and forth, and it's going to change the day in which we're, we're choosing the basis, um, and this is going to align them differently. So let me make that a little bit clearer by drawing where that line is in the data set. So we're going to add a rule x. Um, that is the date that corresponds to this index i. And we can pull out the first or the ith row of the frcb data set. Uh, and then pull out the date value from that. So it starts at 0, and it goes up and down, uh, or goes along the x-axis as we increase our index. Um, likewise, what we can do is we can draw a rule at 1, which is our normalized value. Okay, So this 1 is moving up and down because the, the y domain is changing, because the y domain is computed based on the extent of normalized y values. But what you can see as I'm changing this index is that all four of these lines go through this intersection point. And that is because they're all normalized at whatever their value is on this 110th day or 110th row um, in the data set. So uh, if I wanted to you know, make it a little bit easier to see what's happening, I could fix the domain here. So for example, I could say from 0 to 2. And then as I move it up and down, you can see the stocks moving up and down. Uh, but the y-axis is staying fixed, so it's a little bit easier to compare. So you can see you know, this was a real moment of crisis right here. Um, now another thing we might want to do uh, is we could change how these uh, y-axes are labeled. Um, so that we could show them as percent returns. Um, but uh, another thing we might want to do is to change our basis function uh, so that we're actually looking up the value based on the date. Um, and I could show you how to do that as well, although that'll take a, a few more minutes. Um, so maybe I'll just show you how to do kind of the, the percent return, because that's a little bit easier than, than doing the date lookup. So for that, we can do a tick format here. Uh, and this is going to control how these values are displayed in the y-axis. Um, so right now, we're getting the default tick format. So if I do 0.2f, for example, then I get two fractional digits versus one fractional digit. Um, but what we actually want to show here is percent return. So we have to take these um, relative values. So 1.0 is a 0% change. 2.0 is plus 100%. So what we'll do is we'll take this y value here, and we will subtract 1 from it. Now you can see 1 goes to 0, and 2 goes to 1. And then we will multiply that by 100 
to get percent change. Um, and then the last thing is maybe we want to show a um, plus sign for the values that are going up. Um, or we might want to show a percent sign um, at the end. Um, but I think for the plus sign, what we can do is use one of these uh, immediately invoked function expression. Okay, so what I want to do is pass in a format here, which is plus uh, D like that. Uh, and then we will call our format on the result of this expression. Oops, I forgot that. Okay, so you know if I do 0.1F again, you can see I'm getting those additional digits. Default is six. Um, but I don't want any fractional digits here. Okay, so now we're seeing plus 100, plus 80, that sort of thing. Um, I could also use the plus uh, percent here, dot zero percent, and show percent change. Yeah, maybe that's good. Uh, although sometimes what I like to do is put it in the label instead uh, so that you don't have to read the percent sign so many times. And so that would look like plus D again, and then we put the 100 back in here. Yeah, so that's that's the style I like to use. Um, all right, and although you can see that the formatting here on the Y axis does not extend also to the tooltip, um, you get a kind of little bit confusing here because this is showing you kind of the underlying value, the value relative to one rather than the percentage change. Um, so we might make some changes to the tooltip, um, which has not yet been released yet to give you better control over that formatting. All right. Um, so that's a little demo of how to make an index chart in plot um, using the normalized transform and then using this um, range input in order to control sort of which row in the data sets you want to use to normalize your data. Um, and again, this is useful for comparing the performance of different investments over time. Uh, to show their relative returns based on whatever day you might have bought them. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.